Good morning, students. This is Mr. Chance, and um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try to summarize our class discussions uh, from this week regarding the poem The Tiger by William Blake. Uh, as I'm sure you remember, if you were in class, uh, we've taken a break from our normal text, and uh, I decided to look at this poem instead of uh, uh, what would have been next in the book. And uh, the re reason I did this is I wanted us to try to do uh, something a little bit uh, more difficult. Uh, William Blake's poem, The Tiger, is deceptively simple. Uh, as we talked about in class, uh, this, this poem is not really about a tiger. Uh, this poem is a sort of reflection of William Blake uh, rather unconventional religious beliefs. William Blake was a dualist uh, of sorts. He believed that there were two divine powers in, in the universe and that these powers were in conflict with each other. Um, so to, to, to an extent, uh, one, one of these divine powers could be characterized as good and the other one could be characterized as evil or at least not good. And what William Blake is doing in this poem is he's doing what all sorts of thoughtful people have done throughout human history. Uh, they're, they're looking at the world around them with all of the problems that the world has, with all of the evil that people do to each other. And they're asking, um, how come there's this evil in the world? This uh, becomes especially uh, important question to answer um, within a monotheistic context, such as uh, within Christianity, because Christianity uh, posits that God is all-knowing and all-powerful and all-good, and if God is all of those things, then why is there so much evil in the world? And this, this, is, this is a hard question. It, it's one that I, I believe does have an answer that we're not going to go into in this video. We don't have time for that. Um, but it's, it's not an easy answer to understand. It's not an easy answer to accept, um, even, if, even if we do understand it. And William Blake, um, he didn't accept the standard Christian answer um, that, that he had been received after, you know, centuries of Christian reflection on this question. So Blake asks in this poem, um, is the same God that created the lamb, and, and notice please that that is uh, capitalized. This is clearly on Blake's part a reference to Jesus. Um, is the same God who created the Lamb, who created Jesus, this uh, teacher and a holy man uh, renowned for uh, his, his lessons on love and brotherhood and forgiveness, is, is the same God that created him the God that created the tiger? And again, uh, tiger is capitalized when it shouldn't be. Um, tiger is meant to be the opposite of the lamb. So everything that Jesus is, the lamb is the opposite. Uh, Jesus is uh, meek and mild. The, the, the tiger is not. The tiger is dangerous. The tiger is uh, um, assertive and deadly and powerful um, and, and so on. And, and this for Blake, when he asks this question, um, the, his, he had, notice he doesn't answer the question in this poem, right? Um, what, what he's doing here is comparing and contrasting, really. Um, for, for Blake, his ultimate answer is, no, it's not the same God. Uh, but that, that goes a little bit beyond the scope of the writing assignment. Uh, so now let me, let me put this poem away and I want to get out the picture of the notes that um, uh, I had on the board for one of the classes. 
Uh, these notes aren't exactly the same as they were in, in all three classes, but they're, they're close, right? Uh, because what I'm wanting you to do is um, explain the poem, right? Uh, explain the poem. I, I'm not asking anybody to accept William Blake's answers or his beliefs. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're just attempting to understand what Blake is saying. And so in that regard, uh, our, our essays that we write always have three main ideas. And the main ideas that we derive from the poem are based on the characters in the poem, uh, the tiger, the creator, and the lamb. And then we listed the characteristics of those, these characteristics, or, or the identity of, as the case may be. Um, the lamb is clearly meant to represent Jesus, uh, uh, the, the Son of God. And if the tiger is the opposite, that uh, the immediate conclusion is perhaps that the tiger is meant to be the devil. Um, that's, that's at this point in time a fair inference, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, and if the lamb is peaceful and gentle and docile, the tiger is the opposite of these things. And the poem bears that out right? Uh, the, the, the tiger lurks in the forests of the night, this dark, scary, wild place. Uh, the tiger is forged from metal and fire, right? So uh, the, the tiger is fiery. And as we noted in class, fiery doesn't just mean on fire, right? Uh, Blake is playing with the meanings of words here, the double meanings of words so that the tiger is angry and unpredictable and uncontrollable. Uh, the tiger has a deadly clasp. Once the tiger gets hold of you, that's it. Um, game over. Um, and in between these two, uh, the, so to speak, is the creator. And this is who William Blake is speaking to in the poem. So all of the questions that the poem asks are, are directed to the creator. And we can infer from the poem that whoever or whatever this creator is, in Blake's opinion, this creator is immortal. That, that's in the first four lines, what immortal hand or eye, right? That's a reference to the creator's hand and eye, not the tiger's. Um, this creator is obviously has to be powerful. Um, if it, I mean, has to, I mean, it's a creator. It has to be powerful if, if the creator created the lamb, created the tiger. Um, and, and, Famously, and perhaps annoyingly, uh, William Blake's poem does not answer any of these questions. Uh, the poem does not speak for the creator. Um, and this, we, we get this sense that perhaps the creator is mysterious. Perhaps the creator just doesn't answer these questions um, for, for whatever reason. So I, I, I hope that uh, jogs your memory, or if you missed class, if it helps uh, you make a little more sense of the poem for uh, what we were doing in class with it. And uh, please keep in mind that uh, this, this is not really what I'm not, I'm, let me start over again. What I'm asking you to do is not really write a persuasive essay, right? Uh, we're, we're not arguing a particular point of view here. We're just attempting to explain the meaning of the poem as the poem itself. So I, I, I hope that's helpful. And, um, and also keep in mind that next week you're only turning in a sentence outline for this. So you're not even really doing a, a complete rough draft this week. Um, I, I hope that's helpful. And I look forward to seeing you in class um, next week. Thank you.